high performing organizations excel at people power and business innovation by hiring top talent to serve them that means giving time attention and investing in employee branding talent acquisition and onboarding in the age of new normal employee experience narrative will continue the drive to attracting top talent in conversation with poonam gupta talent acquisition leader netflix on rethinking talent acquisition for building the a team you will learn how new age tech companies are redefining the talent acquisition spectrum in the new work of world and creating a workplace of tomorrow i would like to invite abid hasan senior assistant editor eth world to lead the conversation over to you abid Welcome to the discussion, Poonam, and thank you so much for joining. It's my pleasure to have you here for our second edition of ETHR Human Capital Summit. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot. So good to have you here. And for the viewers, today we'll be discussing with Poonam a very interesting topic: rethinking talent acquisition for building the A team. And uh, I think we'll highlight some of the key aspects, such as the hiring process, virtual interviewing, culture, to name a few. and without any delay punam uh, first and in a very basic question to you what makes an a team what are your thoughts i think an a team is a team where every individual is uh, best at what they do uh, right and um, to give you a sports example because we're a sports obsessed nation uh, you know if you if you think of a cricket team which is in form and is doing great it doesn't just have a great captain but it also has the best batsmen and the uh, best bowlers and fielders and wicket keepers and uh, only then it is a well rounded team uh, and to me that example translated work as well wherein the entirety of the team of what outcomes they can deliver and uh, what impacts they can make um depend on how good each of the individual are in the role that they are in so a lot of people think of a team as a team which is a group of high performers uh performance is just one part of it i think an a team to me is people who are brilliant at their craft and one of the best people out there in the market to be doing the role that you have in your organization the other thing that is very unique to an a team uh is that the players are not playing just for themselves but they're playing for the team right so they're not playing to be the best batsman but they're playing for their team to be the best at it so they have the organization's best interest at the center of everything that they do so these are not uh you know high performers that work in silos but these are people who know how to work in a team uh get the best outcomes for their organization and work cross functionally so these form a part of a team member that you would call a a team member okay thank you thank you so much i'll come to my next question so is it realistic for all organizations to hire only top talent for all roles or is it a luxury only some organizations have or can afford you know to be honest uh, it is not easy to hire people who are best at their craft right and uh, or you know hiring is just one part of it to keep them engaged to make them feel challenged while they are at the organization all of that is a challenge so you know uh, a team member is not as easy uh, to find and even more difficult to keep uh, so in my opinion i would say that uh, you should ask yourself this question as to what is your business really need right and uh, your business might not always need uh the best of best right there are trade offs that you might need to make so think of what is the outcome that you want delivered with this team and then think of which is the best team that can deliver that outcome right so it is the a team will look different for every organization and uh, the capability and you could be hiring an engineer in this team versus an engineer in another organization and an a team engineer here could look different from elsewhere right like the question to drive these decisions should be what is it that the impact that this person would make and are they most capable to create that impact uh 
I could give you an example of how this could play out in a, a product company versus a services company, right? Like in a services organization, um, you have a lot of people uh, that are billed, right? Like there are clients and there's billing. So there is a trade-off, right? Like if you waited for the best possible engineer to come and join your team, there is a billing loss that you will have. Right. And so what is the trade off? What is the trade off of that wait? So if in your business waiting that long and finding that gem or unicorn of talent is not going to make financial sense, then your A team will look different from a product company which, which wants to focus on a product feature, which just cannot launch a product without finding that specific sort of engineer that they want. And so maybe waiting for that person is a more um, I would say uh, it can, makes more economic sense for the business. So that's how I would say different organizations, large or small product or services could adapt to the whole question of a team and hiring a teams. Thank you so much Poonam for highlighting this. I would like to add, add one additional question to this. How can the hiring process be customized to enable this? What you really mentioned right now. So yeah, it's it's a great question because you know um, when you say you want to hire the best person, like what what are the things that you need to do? Everybody wants to do that, right? Like everyone wants the best person in that role. And so, how do you make sure that that becomes a reality? Uh, I, I I'll start with with the, putting the focus on the candidate, right? Like if you are focusing to hire a candidate that is. Um, you know, who, who we believe is a high performer, they would like to have a recruiting process, which is challenging enough, right? Like they, uh, they would want a process which challenges them. They would want an organization that can provide them a, a challenging environment. They don't want to come sit and do average work, right? Like they want to do phenomenal work and you want to make sure that you can uh, showcase your organization as one which will give them an opportunity to do the best work of their life. So your interview process is sort of your, you know, window into the work that they will do. So, you know, um, have interesting ways of interviewing people as one. Well, what I would say, right? Like you, you have case studies or you have, uh, you know, live examples. Like in at our organization, sometimes we like to people like for people to, uh, you know, give uh, feedback on actual content that we have put out, right? Like to speak their mind. Like so, this gives them the feeling that even when they are part of the organization, they will have a say that you know, that the organization will listen to them because even as a candidate, if their opinion is being asked for, is being valued, uh, it gives them an impression of how things would be when they come in. So one would be that like, you know, um, formulate uh, an interviewing process that is challenging, that is engaging um, and uh, really uh, pushes the boundaries for these people because that's what they want. They want to be challenged and they want it to feel like an achievement at the end of the day when they do get the job. Yeah. Um, then yeah. another thing that I would say that, you know, um, is really important is picking the right panel for an interview. Right. Uh, and when I say right, I mean the right size and the right people on the panel that the candidate will meet. Um, one common mistake that we do is to put people on the panel whose buy-in we are trying to have, right? Like who are the people this person will work with? We want to please all of them, put them on the panel and, uh, you know, let them have a say. And I think uh, this is not something uh, I personally believe in uh, uh, that would deliver the best result, right? A, a good effective panel is one which will actually go out and check everything that is required for the success in this role. And so if you as hiring manager are going to focus on ABCD, you need people on the panel that will focus on things that you can't, or they have fun functional expertise that only they can check. So make sure that your panel is unique, is diverse, so that you're able to hire diverse people, right? If your panel is not diverse, they will not look for diversity in the candidate itself. So make sure that the panel is diverse. Uh, make sure that they are uh, coming with different, uh, you know, backgrounds and are able to provide a unique, provide a unique interviewing experience in every interview. So every interview shouldn't feel like you know, the same interview with just a different person, right? It's a different set of questions, different focus area. Uh, 
And another thing I think is really important is to make sure that the candidate speaks to somebody uh, who's a peer, who's doing a similar role in either the same location or in another market, who can give them a sense of what it would look like when they get into this role. I think that is, again, very an important step because as much as we are judging the candidate, the candidates also are deciding whether they would want to come and do this role. And so making sure that they have at least one person or one meeting with somebody who's doing the same work or similar work as they are uh, so that they're able to ask more detailed questions. So I think some of these will enable that, you know, the candidate has the right information that they need and also you as an organization are able to assess if this person will be able to create the impact and will be successful at the role that you have. Thank you so much for highlighting uh, in such a detailed manner. And you, I think you mentioned about a team. You also mentioned about how talent for top roles are not only luxury for some organizations. And now you mentioned about the customized, how to enable the hiring process. Now I'll ask you something which is basic, but it is happening all over the world. And it's, I am talking about virtual interviewing. So is uh, virtual interviewing a barrier when it comes to delivering the best candidate experience? What do you think? So I think, uh, you know, like work from home, virtual interviewing also has its pros and its cons. Um, I feel that, uh, I'll start with pros, okay? There are some benefits of virtual interviewing that we, you know, I, I have seen play out is uh, it takes out a lot of bias that we have sometimes when we're meeting people in person. Uh, I'll, 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 you know, I, I don't know if you if you've had people in your organization that joined during the pandemic and when you met them for the first time, some of us were surprised about like their appearance, how tall they were, or, you know, just just some of the things that, uh, you know, it's impossible to know over a video. And I think it's a good thing. Like you, there is a certain amount of bias that plays out, you know, with physical attributes, uh, mannerisms and just, you know, habits like someone goes for smoke breaks, for example, right? Like after an interview, if somebody is going down together, there's a so sort of like bias that, oh, this is somebody I can see on my team, like I can hang out with. These biases should not play out. Uh, and so I feel that, you know, an, a virtual environment makes sure that some of these biases are taken out of it, right? Um, but then of course, you know, there are so much, uh, so many benefits of actual in-person interactions that a virtual environment cannot replace, right? Like that vibe that you talk about or that, you know, um, just, just culture, right? Like a, I think culture should be like one of the top things that a candidate should be assessing, um, you know, when, when they're going into an organization and it is so difficult to assess a company's uh, culture in the 30 minute video call that you have, right? Like you're not seeing them, the office space or how people interact with each other. Like some of these things are a giveaway for how the office culture is. Um, but I would say that, um, it's not a barrier like uh, if organizations try, they can make sure that, you know, this becomes more and more interactive. Uh, uh, you know, there are interesting ways of doing some of these things like, you know, um, get get more than one person together, make it informal, like think of what are the things that a person is missing out because they didn't come and see your office, right? Like, is it possible to send them a uh, virtual tour of the office so that they just get a sense of what your workplace looks like, uh, you know? So, yeah, you know, I, I wouldn't say it's a barrier completely. We've had so many people who join virtually and up to, you know, it's been like a couple of years, like people have joined and gotten promoted, uh, you know, so uh, we have clearly seen it's possible uh, to hire, to train, uh, engage and grow virtually. Uh, so yeah, it's not a barrier. Uh, there, it does take away some of the biases that we have and there are ways we can enhance that experience if we did make an effort. Exactly, exactly. You directly mentioned about the bias part and technology has played a very vital role in virtual hiring. Not only people joined, got promoted, they have left the organization as well as joined somewhere else as well. Actually, yeah, that has happened as well. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Coming to uh, this uh, candidate experience, I'm really happy that you mentioned about candidate experience and this conference is all about human people experience. So talking from, uh, thinking from a, uh, putting the candidate hat and thinking from their perspective, as a candidate, how do you assess if the culture of the organization is one where you will thrive? 
how do you assess that that's a very good question to ask honestly and i think one that we kind of ignore right like most uh I wouldn't generalize, I wouldn't say most, but a lot of people, uh, when they're choosing an organization to work for, uh, they're thinking about job titles, uh, they're thinking about compensation, and rightly so, right? Like these are things that are important. We are a culture that values, uh, uh, you know, titles, growth, uh, and things like that, right? So how do you stay away from these things? You can't, right? Like all of us want jobs that pay better. Uh, but at the end of the day, right, like with the whole um, environment right now, you, you would have another organization that will pay you slightly better than this one, right? Or your current organization that will say, oh, I'll match this compensation and stay back, right? Like, and so what do you do in that, in that case? Like, what is the choice that you would make? And, you know, um, I think culture is the answer. I think an environment where you will grow and thrive is most important. I think choose... First of all, I would I would highly recommend people choose a place that that seems like a place where they belong. They can be themselves uh, and uh, where uh, they feel valued, right? And then if if you if you are interviewing for a place that made you feel like this, then I think that is a fit, right? Um, you don't have to look for people that are like you, right? Like diversity goes both ways, right? Like it's okay to go work for people that are very different from you. Uh, but a culture that will fit will be one that will feel natural, right? Like that, will, that will not feel forced, that will align with your personal value system. Um, for example, uh, my current organization talks about, uh, you know, um, keeping only high performers or people who are best at their jobs. And then people who are struggling to be the best, then we, we prefer to let them go and uh, you know have a good severance paid out we feel it's a better use of their time that they, they can look for a job in that uh, time that where they will feel best utilized and we'd rather focus on finding someone who would be a better fit here now this is a philosophy that might not gel well with everybody and it's totally okay right like when we meet candidates we we talk to them about this it's okay for some of them to feel this isn't something that i agree with and so if you don't agree with, step away, right? Like that organization is not for you. But if you, if you hear uh, these cultural tenets, these things that people actually, you know, they don't, don't just have it written down, but they actually emulate in their organization. And if you feel this is something that makes sense to me, right? Like I, for example, when I was interviewing and I met um, some of the talent coordinators, they were the best coordinators that I had ever interacted with. And I was like, oh my God, like, why can't I have like a team that's like the best of everything, right? Like, and so it felt like a match. And so that's how it should feel, right? Like an interview should feel like a match, right? Like it, it, you should fit, it should feel natural and you should feel excited about the future that you have at that place. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for, you know, highlighting this part when you mentioned, uh, uh, why can't I have team? You can't have everything, but at, at least uh, you have a good team. And I think uh, Netflix is doing well in terms of acquisition. And uh, you mentioned how you, uh, how your company also, uh, you know, acquired a lot of talent during this pandemic. So on that note, I think we'll have to end this conversation, this quick 20 minutes conversation. Thank you so much, Poonam. It was it was wonderful hosting you. Thank you so much. And I hope uh, you know some of the um, uh, stuff that we discussed could be of value uh, to the people that tune in to listen to this. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Ms. Gupta and Abit, for an interesting conversation. Now we'll move to the next session. Stay tuned.